do it, I know how to answer the questions. And during my practice test, I was doing very well because I wasn't under pressure. But once I was in the real thing, I took a lot of time in each question, especially in LR and reading comp, making sure that I was responding with the correct answer. And at the end, I ran out of time. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. So basically timing, pacing, taking too long. Yeah. Uh, do you notice trends in certain question types that give you difficulty? No, I was just making sure each one of them was responded correctly. And I was like double checking the wrong answers, thinking to myself, why is this wrong? Instead of like, why is the right question correct? Mm -hmm. And what's your overall accuracy rate on an LR section, would you say? I miss about six. Pretty good. I mean, that's not a terrible score. It suggests that you already have a strong foundation. Yeah. It's really rather just that you're getting difficult questions wrong because they're difficult. Yeah. And I think I, I didn't do well under pressure. Mm -hmm. What does your review process look like? I'm trying to do the Socratic method and just like writing pages long and like just one answer, trying to see why the correct answer is right and what the, why the wrong answers are wrong and what drew me to the correct answer or the wrong answer. Just like thinking about my mental process and how I'm responding to questions. Right, right. And how many questions would you say you've reviewed in this way? About 20, 25. That's good. That's a good number. Have you been attending any of the LR classes or have you watched any of the previous class recordings walking through the Socratic review method? Yes, just once because I joined recently. Okay, okay. It may take more time and watching more classes, attending more classes to get a better sense of the rhythm of just how in-depth this process can be. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. How long would you say you typically spend reviewing one question in this way? Oh, it's five to seven minutes. Okay. That might be it. It takes a lot longer, actually. Okay. It can take 20 minutes. It can take 30 minutes when done to the fullest possible extent. Analyze the question from every possible angle, dissecting and rewriting the stimulus analyzing each of the answer choices and what potentially makes them tempting, reframing the question in a new way with a new topic, like a parallel argument. Okay. To make sure that you fully understand the argument from every angle. It's a lot of work. I actually have two classes that were both covering one question. We spent well over an hour and a half looking at this one question from all different perspectives. Okay. So I'll send you the links to that, those classes so you can get a sense of just how much we can value, we can squeeze out of that question and the different things that gave people trouble about it. But it takes a lot of work. Yeah, I think I need to spend more time on that. I'm currently shifting from being addicted to just, just like test after test after test until I bumped into your course and now I'm doing the Socratic method more. Good, good. Well, you're on the right track. I mean, that pattern of taking test after test and yeah. looking at the results, it's one that's very hard to break out of. And it ends up just with a lot of wasted time, a lot of practice material that you've burnt through without getting all the value. And so I'm glad that you've shifted to this approach. Let's just see how far we can take it. Yeah. And I have a question about reading comp because there's a lot to keep in mind when reading the, like the long passages. I know I have to read for structure. I have to keep an eye on viewpoints and the advocates, author's opinion. And I saw, I know you said not to highlight anything, but I end up reading it just like one way and I have to reread it looking for another thing. And I spend a lot of time into that. I understand. Yeah. So you're taking a lot of time reading the passage multiple times as you look for different things. Yes. Is this while you're going through the questions or just during your initial read? Initial read. And then when I look at the questions, I have to basically read the whole paragraph, which the question is referring to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my suggestion would be that during your initial reads, you focus mainly on identifying the author's opinion. Okay. That's it. The author's main point is their, is their opinion 
is the primary purpose, the reason that they wrote the passage. Aim to walk away simply with that. And then note where the details and the supporting examples are so that you can go back and find them when you need them. Not by highlighting them, right? Just in my head. Exactly. Yeah, okay. highlighting can take a lot of time. And on the online LSAT, the highlighting tool isn't that great. It doesn't work that precisely. So I wouldn't suggest using it much. Okay. Okay. Because I was really trying to keep an eye on everything, like from the advocates, like strong words, strong evidence, and the different viewpoints. And I ended up just guessing on the fourth passage because I, I couldn't get there. But mm -hmm. it was the shortest one at least. Yeah, that's good at least. But my suggestion would be overall, I think you get this, is to just not try to take in everything on the initial read. Focus on that main idea specifically. Okay. And then just find, note where the other things are so you can find them when you need to, when you're going back. But I wouldn't aim to digest everything on that initial read. It's too much. Okay. Okay. And I have about four weeks from now till the November one. I don't know what my strategy should be. Should I do like full test a week and then the rest of the day is just reviewing them? I would say, yeah, one exam per week and review in depth, possibly two exams per week. What's your schedule like non-LSAT related? What else do you have going on? I'm currently unemployed, just focusing on the LSAT and applications. That's great. You have the time to really make a lot out of, it, out of this process. So then I might say just doing two exams a week and reviewing in depth, and okay. then attend the classes on LR in particular, watch the class recordings on LR, if that's your main area. Also take a look at some of the reading comp deep dive classes, if reading comp is an area that you want to spend a bit more time on. No, yeah, reading comp is my worst area. LR is the most frustrating one because I know all the basics. I know how to respond to questions if I have time, which I don't. And that's the thing, yeah. And I have to do my writing example in like in sometime soon. Do you have any recommendations for that? Yeah. Yeah. So for the writing sample, I definitely wouldn't worry about it for now. Focus on the scored portions of the LSAT. They're okay. far more important. As for the writing sample, maybe do a practice one or two. You don't need to spend much more time on it than that. And just aim to state your chosen side as clearly as possible. And lay out, but also acknowledge its weaknesses. So a balanced presentation. And should I make it like two or three five, uh, paragraphs? I would probably suggest four. A very simple structure would be okay. intro summarizing everything, conclusion summarizing everything, where in both of those you state that you're choosing one option over the other and the reasons why, very briefly. Like you have competing priorities or competing interests, but then you're choosing to value one more highly over the other. And then in your body paragraphs, you acknowledge the strengths of your side, the weaknesses of the other, and then the weaknesses of your side and the strengths of the other, but then conclude that the strengths of your side outweigh the weaknesses. Okay. And should I mix them, like both the sides in one paragraph, or just focus like one paragraph on the strengths and the weaknesses of that option and why should we pick that option? Or just like kind of talking about both interchangeably, like? I would probably talk about both interchangeably, but that isn't as important as just being as clear as possible about what you're choosing and why. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about that. I get that. I mean, do, do one or two of them and you'll be, you'll be fine. And um, I have some recordings in the course covering the writing sample as well. Okay. Like Full-length class recordings where we walk through writing samples. Okay. Yeah. I will take a look before I do the writing example. And I don't know why, because I know the difference, but I struggle between recognizing the necessary versus the sufficient like, theme. I... Like, I know where they ask me directly, but I don't know how to recognize necessary versus assumption in a passage where it's not clearly stated. It's based on the wording in the question step. So necessary assumption questions have words and phrases synonymous with necessity, like depends upon, requires, and assumes. Sufficient assumption questions have words and phrases in the question stem synonymous with sufficiency, like allows, 
enables follows logically if assumed and Ooh. properly inferred if assumed. That's okay. the very, very brief summary of those differences. I actually have a few workshops covering that as well. Like I'll send you the links. Okay. Okay. No, uh, but like, yeah, but what I mean, it's in the passage. I don't know which one is necessary. Oh, you mean conditions? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Conditions. Okay. Okay. So for conditions, it's, there's indicator words that we cover in the foundational section of the course. I would make sure that you drill the indicator words and know them inside out. Yeah. And then you ask yourself, which one is requiring the other? Okay. Yeah. Because I have a list of your vocabulary and it's long and I just <laughs> like remember it, but it's hard work. This is the one of the few things that I would drill or make flashcards about. Okay. And would you suggest while like practicing LR, should I like highlight the vocabulary, like strong words to keep an eye on them on the real test, like train my mind to keep an eye on those keywords? Yeah, you want to know them like you know any words that you use in everyday life. Yeah. Like you want to be as, not like you're, you have to, you drill them at first till you memorize them, but then it should be that you could come up upon them in any context and you just get, you just know them. Yeah. No, I mean, like, uh, when they use everyone, all, or, like, strong words are definitive to the answer. Mm -hmm. And I, that I didn't know that, like, that it was that important in the answer. When they say all, and then you have an answer that says none, because it's, like, the opposite. That's sometimes why I struggle. Because I used to pick up answers that would say most when the passage, when, the, like, the stem is about all of them. And most is not like the opposite or the same as all. Yeah. Yeah. You're right that those are important words to pick up on. And so that's most is like a quantity word as well. Yeah. So I would make sure that you're getting all the quantity words, like few, some, many, most, all, several, everything like that. Cause it does affect the degree of strength. Exactly. So now I'm reading mostly trying to recognize those words, but then I miss on other things. So it's like a lot to keep in mind while reading these passages in LR and in reading comp. Yeah, nice. Okay. So yeah. I think that answers my questions. This is really helpful. Great. Of course, my pleasure. Well, I'll send you those links that I mentioned. Feel free to reach out if you need any, anything at all moving forward. I'm happy to help. Thank you so much. Of course. Have a good one. You too. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.